Goretti Hogan, who I feel needs no introduction. Uh, Goretti is an Irish socialist activist and lecturer in social policy at the University of Ulster in Northern Ireland. She was a member of the first Women's Right to Choose group in Ireland in the early 80s and a founder of the anti-amendment campaign, the campaign to oppose the Eighth Amendment um, to the Irish Constitution. In Northern Ireland, she was a founder member of Derry Women's Right to Choose group and was one of the founders of Alliance for Choice in Northern Ireland 20 years ago. Please welcome Goretti Hogan. Okay, thanks. I'm not going to speak for very long because I know you're getting very wet, but I just want to say that when we were marching against the Eighth Amendment before it went into the Constitution, there was never a march that was a tenth of the size of this one. It's amazing to see how many of you are out there. Okay, I just want to talk a bit about what's been happening in Northern Ireland. This is 2016, 100 years since the 1916 rising, and James Connolly said back then that partition would lead to a carnival of reaction north and south. And that's exactly what happened, because things are worse in the north than in the south. And it's hard to believe that things could be worse for women in the north than they are in the south. But since the last March for Choice, we've had some good things and some bad things happen. We saw the end of November a high court judge, not a socialist, a high court judge saying that the law on abortion in the north means that there's one law for the rich and another for the poor. And what that High Court judge said was echoed again in January by the judge who gave a suspended sentence to a woman who was convicted of causing an abortion using abortion pills that she'd got on the internet. He made the point that had she had enough money to travel to England, she would not have been in front of the court. He didn't give her the life sentence in prison that she could have got under the law. He suspended the sentence because he said that if she was in any other part of the so-called United Kingdom, she would not have been before the court. She would have been able to get an abortion free on the health service, which is what every woman should be able to get um, across this island. But while the woman who was convicted has not gone to prison, her life has been changed forever. She's not going to be able to travel to Australia. She's not going to be able to travel to America. She's not going to be able to work as a teacher. She's not going to be able to work as a care assistant. Her life is absolutely changed utterly and she's only 21 years old. And that's because of the unjust laws that we have north and south um, of this island. But you, but you see these prosecutions that they started in the north? against women who take the abortion pills, they're a very double-edged sword. On the one hand, they're absolutely dreadful for the women whose lives are turned upside down um, when they're charged. But you see, if the state is going to live to regret those, those prosecutions, in my opinion. Because every time they prosecute a woman, it gives more of a backbone to the resistance and the fight for a woman's right to choose in the North. When they prosecuted the first woman, the mother who got the pills for her daughter, for her teenage daughter, like any mother would, with any sense. Um, when, when they prosecuted that first woman, we, uh, there was a, an open letter of over 200 women and about 30 men that said that they had done exactly the same thing. They had got pills for other women as well and said, come and arrest us. If you're going to be arresting vulnerable women who are on their own and who are isolated, come and arrest us activists who are very openly saying uh, that we help women get abortion pills. When they, that the, the second woman was actually convicted, three women uh, from Alliance for Choice and Derry went to the police station and handed themselves into the police with evidence to say, here, we did exactly the same. Come on, why don't you arrest us as well? They don't know yet whether they're going to be charged or not, but I'll tell you this much, if they are charged, there'll be another bunch of women right outside the police station to go in and confess again. Because the truth is, this is a risen movement. The women of Ireland, are North and South, are saying, no more, it's our bodies, it's our choice, and you can't stop us having abortions, so you better let us have them free on the health service, and the sooner the better. 
And just finally, you see for us in the North, the best thing you could do to help those women who are being prosecuted is to repeal the AIDS down here and let the, the people, the, the <laughs> I was going to curse, and let our politicians in the North know that things are changing across this island and that right across the island, North and South, women will be free and women will have choice. Thank you.